Hi, this is Joshua Stern. And Michael Walters. We're with the Stern team at Keller Williams. Our goal, by the way, is to keep you educated about all things real estate so you can make great decisions when it comes to your own home buying, home selling, or home investing goals. So today's topic, I'm going to answer another question from our client pool. Are there still tax benefits with home ownership? Quick note here, we're not tax professionals, so please be sure to meet with a qualified CPA for more details. And if you don't have one, we're happy to refer one that we completely trust. So home ownership has always been the great American dream, and Congress, with one exception, did not take it away when it passed the tax reform bill last December. To foster and encourage this dream, Congress has consistently enacted or preserved tax legislation which favors homeowners. Indeed, much has been written that our tax laws discriminate against renters by giving unfair and unequal tax benefits to those who actually own their homes. Every four years, some candidate for higher political office tries to focus our attention on equalizing the tax laws and repealing the homeowner benefits. But these arguments have consistently fallen on deaf ears. Here locally, our own political action committee has successfully fought off and worked diligently to ensure that our legislators don't tack on the insidious transfer fee which gets charged to the seller or buyer at closing. Thankfully. And for those of us who own homes, here's a list of the itemized tax deductions available to the average homeowner. Every year you're permitted to deduct the following expenses. Taxes, uh, like real property taxes, both state and local can be deducted. Uh, the one exception referenced above, tax filers can deduct on Schedule A any combination of state and local property taxes and income or sales taxes, but only up to a total of $10,000. Interestingly though, married couples who file their own separate tax return can only deduct up to $5,000. However, it should be noted that real estate taxes are only deductible in the year that they are actually paid to the government. Thus, if in the year 2018 your lender held in escrow monies for taxes due in 2019, you can't take a deduction for these taxes when you file your 2018 tax return. So mortgage lenders are required to send an annual statement to borrowers by the end of January each and every year, reflecting the amount of mortgage interest and real estate taxes that the homeowners actually paid during the previous year. Next is mortgage and interest. Interest on mortgage loans on a first or second home is fully deductible, subject to the following limitations acquisition loans up to $1 million, and home equity loans up to $100,000. If you are married but file separately, these limits are split in half. But note that for the new loans taken out after December 14, 2017, the limit on the de deductible mortgage debt is reduced to $750,000. Loans in existence prior to that date are grandfathered. You must understand the concept of the acquisition loan. To qualify for such a loan, you must buy, construct, or substantially improve your home. If you refinance for more than the outstanding indebtedness, the excess, excess amount does not qualify as an acquisition loan unless you use all of the excess to improve your home. However, another any other excess may qualify as a home equity loan. Right, so I mean what he's saying is basically if you pull out a home equity loan you actually have to use that money to improve your house. So another one is points. Because mortgage rates are still considerably low, not too many borrowers right now are paying points, but with interest rates on the rise, this is something to attend to. When you obtain a mortgage loan, in order to get a lower rate mortgage, you would pay one or more points up front. Whether referred to as like loan origination fees, premium charges or discounts, they're still points. Each point is essentially 1% of the amount that's being borrowed. If you obtain a loan of $170,000, each point will cost you $1,700. And the interest rate on your loan will then be lowered. The IRS has also ruled that even if points are paid by sellers, they're still deductible by the home buyer. Points paid to a lender when you refinance your current mortgage are not fully deductible in the year that they're paid. You have to allocate the amount over the entire life of the loan. So for example, if you paid 1,700 in points for a 30-year loan, each year you're permitted to deduct only 56 bucks and 66 cents, which is 1,700 divided by 30. However, when you pay off this new loan, any remaining portion of the points that you have not deducted are then deductible in full. Needless to say, if you have any questions about these tax benefits, discuss them with your financial and legal advisors. We hope this has been useful information for you. 
please give us a call or send us an email if you have any real estate questions or needs. And don't forget that you're able to get right there free instant market evaluation for your own property by uh, clicking on the home evaluation tab. And also if you're in the market to look for a home or just kind of curious what's available, go ahead and click on the home search tab because that's going to bring you real time to all properties listed by all brokerages for the entire Wasatch Front.